Hello, welcome to another video on the SQLearn K-Means algorithm. In this video, we are going to discover how we can use the elbow plot method and the sell out method to identify how many clusters are required while we use the K-Means algorithm. For this particular example, we are going to use the same small customer segmentation data. In case you haven't watched the previous video, I highly recommend you watch that video before watching this particular video on elbow method and the sell out method. So let's dive into this particular example. For this, I have my code present in Kaggle kernel. If you want this particular code, you can simply click on the link mentioned in the description section below and you can get started immediately if you have the Kaggle account. If you don't have the Kaggle account, please do register and then you will be able to access this code and run along with me. I'm going to increase the size a little bit so that we can make space for this particular code. So we're going to begin by first importing all the necessary libraries and plotting libraries. We run the code and then we're going to import the data and rename some of the columns because there's just going to be different names available within this particular columns. So we have annual income K spending score 1 200 and we're just going to rename this for better usage later on. So I've renamed it and I've put them as income and spending score for this example. We are going to take only two columns and create a clusters that we will be able to see what are the clusters we are creating and how the sellout method and the elbow method are working to get us that same clusters. So first let's use the elbow method to identify the clusters. We're going to use import sqlearn.cluster as cluster and then on how to identify the clusters using elbow method. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this cluster analysis 12 times and each of the time we're going to run this particular cluster analysis. We're going to use cluster as one, two, three, four, and so on, so forth till 12. But while we run this particular scores, we're going to also calculate the WSS scores, which is the within cluster sub of squared. So when you begin with one cluster, it means that all of the points are one cluster. And if you check the compactness by the WSS score, then you will see that it will be fairly large. But if you divide the same number of points into two clusters, three clusters, four clusters, and so on and so forth till the 12th clusters, you will see that the score will keep decreasing, right? So that's what we'll be doing here. We, we take the k-means method and we run it here. Now with this particular thing, you'll see that the n clusters is equal to k. k would mean that we are going to take a range from one to 12 and it's going to begin with one. So k begins with one and then it keeps changing in every of the, um, in every loop that is run here. And then while we do that, what we're going to do is we'll fit the k-means algorithm and then we will store the WSS score from the fitted algorithm that is k-means dot inertia and this is what gives you the WSS scores. So we're going to store that and then keep appending to an array so that we have all the values retained in that particular array. So if I run this code, what this does is it runs the cluster analysis 12 times each time with a different k. Once we get the WSS scores, we can store the clusters along with the WSS scores in a data frame and this is how the data frame will be looking like. So we have these clusters and the WSS scores and like we spoke earlier, you will see that the WSS score begins with a large value and it keeps decreasing. This is how it will be helping us to identify which cluster is going to be good. Now with these values, obviously it's not easy to identify with a table like this, but if we plot this on a table, we'll see that elbow form and then we can choose what is the number of clusters that is going to be fitted for this particular model. So if I plot this, I took a SNS dot scatter plot and said X is equal to clusters and Y is equal to WSS. Basically I have the clusters on one side and the WSS score on the other side. You will see with WSS one, it begins with a very large value. And as you keep increasing the cluster, it sort of reduces. Now you'll notice the elbow forms at cluster five. That's where the bend is looking like this. It's not smooth, but it's looking like a bend. So obviously this means that five is the right number of clusters for this particular data. Now, how can we validate this? Obviously with elbow method, this is one way to identify it, but there's another method that's called the silhouette method. And let's see if you're getting the same response or the same clusters in that particular method. So let's go to the 
sellout method. And in sellout method, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to run the algorithm 10 or 11 times, and then we'll see what the sellout score is looking like and interpret the results to identify what are the number of clusters. For that, we'll import Escalon metrics as metrics because the sellout score calculation is present within this particular library. So we imported that library. And now what we're going to do is create the clusters again from three to 13 and look at the sellout score for each of those clusters. So here's the creation of the k-means clusters, fitting it and then extracting the labels. And then we're also going to append the sellout score by giving the data frame, the labels, giving the metric as Euclidean, sample size of 1000 and random state of 200. So if I run this particular piece of code, you'll see I'll get the sellout score at three, which is 0 0.46 or 0 0.49. And you'll see that it will increase and come to a peak and then start reducing again from there, right? So if you'll see for us, that point is 0 0.46, 0 0.49, 0 0.55. And from 5.5, it then reduces again, right? So this is the point where we see the peak of the sellout score, which means the number of clusters for this particular data is going to be five. So with this, with elbow method and the sellout method, we are able to get five as the clusters. Now remember in the previous example, we also did the algorithm and we identified with the plot itself that we are getting five clusters. Now let's plot the same thing on the data and validate the same. That is the elder methods, sellout method, and with the data that we are looking at using the plot are the same or no. So if we'll go back to the plotting example, we're gonna perform k-means algorithm with five clusters and I'm gonna run it again. It's gonna fit it. And now what we're gonna do is plot this. So if I plot it and show a scatter plot here, you'll see that we have five clusters as we have seen in the elbow method and the sellout method. Now remember, with the two variables, it's easy to plot and see it. Maybe even three variables, you can do a 3D plot and see it. However, beyond four variables, it's not going to be easy identifying with the plotting method. So we're going to rely on obviously the elbow or sellout method to identify how many clusters we should be using in the algorithm and how many clusters we should be using in the algorithm and making an interpretation on the clusters. So this is how you execute elbow method and sellout method to identify clusters for the k-means algorithm. If you like this video, guys, please hit the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.